At last the day came when Snowball's plans were completed. At the meeting on the following Sunday, the question of whether or not to begin work on the windmill was put to a vote. When the animals had assembled in the big barn, Snowball stood up and, through occasional interruption of bleeping by the sheep, set forth his reason for advocating the building of the windmill. Then Napoleon stood up to reply. He said very quietly that the windmill was nonsense and that advice that that he advised nobody to vote for it. And he promptly sat down and had spoken for barely 30 seconds. And it seemed almost indifferent as to the effect that he produced. At this, Snowball sprang to his feet and shouted down the, sh the sheep that had begun bleeping again and broke out into a passionate appeal in favor of the windmill. Until now, the animals had been about equally divided in their sympathies, but in a moment, Snowball's eloquence had carried them away. <laughs> in glowing sentences, he painted a picture of Animal, animal Farm as it might be when sword labor was lifted from the animals' backs. His, Im his imagination had now run far beyond craft cutters, turnip snippers. <laughs> Electricity, he said, could operate thrushing machines, plows, harrows, rollers and reapers, binders, and besides supplying every stall with its own electricity, light, hot heat and hot water, <laughs> and an electric heater. By the time he had finished speaking, there was no doubt as to which way the vote would go. But just at that moment, Napoleon stood up and cast a peculiar squeal along, uh, alongside looking at Snowball uttered in a high-pitched whimper of a kind no one had ever heard him utter before. At this time, there was a terrible baying sound outside, and nine enormous dogs wearing brass-studded collars came bounding into the barn. They dashed straight for Snowball, who only sprang from the place just in time to escape, escape the snipping jaws. Oh, fucking Orwell does it again. George Orwell does it again. Marcus Conti reporting on the Trump wall. What's the message? What is Orwell trying to tell us today? Uh, my gloves on. It's cold out. It's cold and windy in New York. What's Orwell trying to tell us before I launch into my Trump rant. Right? He's trying to tell us that the labor, right? See, Napoleon believed in the wall. I mean, the, the wall. <laughs> I gave it away, right? See, Snowball believed in the, in the, in the windmill. And so did Napoleon. But Napoleon never showed his cards. He said, ah, shit. It, piss on it. Right? That's what he said. But when it was real, and there was, what, money, right, trade. See, that was really what it was about. The windmill would increase productivity, right, increase revenue for the people, right. But the revenue never hits the real, it never, it's always stolen at the last minute, as in the case of Napoleon, right. So let's talk about the wall, right. So last night, Trump went 10 minutes, ah, Wall blitz. <laughs> Border wall bliss. Whoa. Powerful, right? You saw that? I like, his, I like this line right here, he said. We build walls not because we hate those outside, but because we love those inside. Oh, man. Now po Trump's the poet. It's poetic, right? It's very poetic. Right, when you think about it. So, let's talk about the shutdown first. So there's been 20 shutdowns since 1970. 
uh, right? Some for a day, some as much as 18 days. This looks like it might be the longest running shutdown, but just an interesting fact. The only president that had never had a government shutdown in modern history since the 70s was George Bush. Right? In the eight years, there was never a shutdown. It's an interesting fact. So, um, Trump called it a humanitarian crisis, unseen <laughs> ever before. He also said that 90% of the drugs that come into the country come in through the Mexican border. He also said fentanyl was one of them. That's, that's factually incorrect. Most of the drugs in this country, most of the drug opioid problem in this country right now is Big Pharma creating it. I think we all know that. All the medications and I'm, I'm, I'm walking right into the sun right now. Let me go the other way. Right? It's mostly, it's mostly Big Pharma hooking people out on drugs, right? But what is the wall about, right? Let me just read some more facts and I'll talk about it. So he called it a humanitarian crisis, 90% of the drugs. It's a must watch. Definitely watch it. 10 minutes of bliss. The funniest was watch also Pelosi and um, Chuck Schumer's reaction. It's like it was like a, a, a Saturday Night Live skit. They look like two idiots, right? Standing there opposing everything that, that Trump said, right? So, so far, twenty billion estimated twenty billion dollars has been set has been spent over the years on a border wall, right? In in maintenance and in, in in other ideas, and a wall had never been built, just pieces of it, right? And Trump now now steel wall, oh, use an American steel. Whoa. Look, I, I, obviously, you, you, I don't believe in walls. Right? Why don't I believe in walls? Well, let's talk about walls. Remember North Korea? North Korea has a wall, right? What did they use the wall for? To keep the people, keep the, the northern people in. Right? Separating people. How'd that work out for them? Berlin Wall, 96 miles of wall from 1961 to 1989. Tear down that wall! You remember when Reagan said it? Mr. Gorbachev. Tear down this wall. Remember? It's a good idea in 61. What happened in 89? It's a shit idea, right? We have planes now. Planes fly over walls. <laughs> we have submarines. Hold on, I gotta blow my nose. Ah. Woo! How do I look? <laughs> so <laughs> so, um, you know, things fly over the wall, right? Fucking, oh, whatever, man. Oh, the, the wall, remember when there was no planes? They used kites to fly over the wall. You know that one? That was the Great Wall of China. 5,500 miles of fucking wall. Woo! That's a real wall, man. And what about the wall around Gaza and the West Bank? We forgot about that wall, right? Israel? Building walls around the around the Pakistan the, the, the Palestinians, right? <laughs> That's the tragedy of walls, right? So another note: eight thousand um, eight hundred thousand federal workers will be officially um, not receiving salary, right? But <laughs> but. Historically, every time there was a shutdown, they all received back pay. So what are we talking about? They, they don't get paid for a week or two or three. I mean, it's, not, it's not a nice thing, but it does seem to be hitting federal agencies at the law enforcement level. So hopefully it'll knock out some FBI jerk-offs and some, <laughs> some NSA guys too, right? We don't want them, we don't want them in the deep state guys not getting paid, right? So... Marcus Conti reporting. So the big takeaway from the wall is this. Right? See, in Snowball, in, in, in Orwell's example, 
the enemy is not necessarily the people on the other side of the wall or even the reason for building the wall the real reason is always money right Chinese did it to and there was a lot of walls in China the Great Walls was only one of them to, to block the silk trade and block this trade and that trade and the other trade right it's the block trade to control the money flow control the flow of people right and to think that the American people are somehow going to prosper from that wall is you know is ridiculous right We're, how are we prospering from other trade right it seems that all the trade in this country corporations make the money and then they, they take it and they and they, they ship it offshore to Cayman Islands and, and Ireland and where Panama wherever wherever they can create a safe haven for their money so we build that wall right and then we create a a a way to monitor trade across the border and it's not like we're not doing it already because what, what i mean in the major uh, on the major roads there are there is a customs uh, setup at the at the crossroads, right? For trade, right? You're not going to throw a tractor trailer over a fence full of TV sets or air conditioners, right? Or wherever else they're building in Mexico, right? Or you know a truckload of people, right? It had the people. Okay, yeah, the people. You'll you'll definitely. It, it reduces the number of people crossing the border. But it doesn't... The economy isn't... Is barely affected by that. Right? Again, it's the analogy of the donuts, right? It's, it's, it's the analogy of the donuts. Remember, there's 20 donuts on the table. And at the table, there's a banker, a worker, and an immigrant. And the banker grabs 19 donuts for himself... And then he looks at the worker and says, you better grab that last donut before the immigrant grabs it. Right? They got you fighting over the, the, the crumbs. 1% control the 99%. 70% of the wealth goes to the top, you know, one-tenth of 1% in this country. So what makes you think you're going to benefit from the, the trade? You want crumbs? You're satisfied with crumbs, right? Crumbs are okay for you? Because that's... You're, you're likely to get less than crumbs on this one. That's all I'm saying about the wall. A beautiful steel wall built by Donald Trump. Trump loves it, right? What's his motive? I don't know. He's saying it's 90% about immigration. I disagree. I think it's 90% about trade. I think he's lying in that respect. And I think that if he should get that wall, there is something, there might be something involving trade across Mexico. But again, you remember how Napoleon, at the last moment, right, Snowball wanted the wall and then Napoleon came in and stole it with his nine dogs and took over? Look at the nine dogs as the nine banks. They'll come in and crush the idea and steal it, right? Led by Goldman Sachs. You know that? That's what they do, right? Funny note, and I'll let you go. Tim Cook, the uh, Apple CEO, right? There's, just a, there's an article in Yahoo Finance I was reading. He makes 283 times, 283 times what the average Apple worker makes, which is about 50 grand a year, right? He's making like $14 million a year. And that's on the low end, right? I think Lloyd Blank, I think the, the Goldman Sachs guys make more than that. The Netflix guys make $23 million. I did an article, I think it was even $32 million a year. It's outrageous income and wealth inequality. So, I mean, it'd, it'd be nice. You know, we could see the steel wall from the, from the moon. <laughs> You could see the steel, you could see the wall of China from the moon, you know that? 
So now we'll be able to see the steel wall of Trump from the moon. All right. Marcus Conti reporting.